So you sell B2B sales, uh, outsourcing. So basically a headhunter. How long have you been doing that for? I've been doing that for about seven years now. It'll be seven years in October. And how, now I had you on here for about 10 minutes just to get to know you a little bit more. Um, how long uh, before you got in this industry have you been in sales? I think you've been in sales quite a long time, right? Yeah, I'm uh, 34 and I've been in sales since I was 18. One of the young guys. All right. So yeah. you're in sales, you transition into outsourcing into B2B. It's a lot different than what you're doing before. I think you said you were selling cell phones. So yeah. from B to C to B to B is a big transition for a lot of people. Okay. Let's walk us through. You get into B2B sales. Let's let's start there. Um what what were you taught to do? Like what were you taught? Like how did you learn how to sell, especially once you started selling B2B? Because it's a lot different than B2C. Yeah, there's it's a lot of bravado because you know, going from B to C, like people expect expect some level of customer service and some kind of like connection. But when you go to B to B, people are more direct and that can be perceived as like mean. So there's a lot of like mind games or like uh bravado, posturing, ego games. Well, you're doing a lot more like C level executives, owners of companies, CFOs, COOs, department heads. You know, you're dealing with more business owners, so a lot of them are going to be more A type personalities. Not all the time, but sometimes yeah. for sure. So you okay? So when you got into B two B, what type of results were you getting before you got into the advanced training here with us? Because you're in our advanced inner circle program. That's like the top of the ball game. You, I think you've been with us for two months, right? Yeah, I just did my two months uh, today. Actually, is my the, my two full months. One of the new guys. All right. So before NEPQ, what what did you notice? Like, how were you selling? What were you saying to your prospects? You know, I was doing a lot of stuff from you know uh, old a, a mix of like Cardone, Belfort, you know Tom Hopkins. There's okay. a guy in the real estate world called Brian Buffini, um, okay. and so like just a mixture of all that and okay. really re relying on my charisma, my personality to you know. So just relying on the charisma, pumping people up. Well, what yeah. type of results did you get from selling that way? Inconsistent, man. Some some days I was Babe Ruth. The other days I was like, Frank, who? Okay. So you hit a home run a few times. You get the big whale, mm -hmm. but you were striking out a lot. Absolutely. It was totally inconsistent. And I would, you know, pray before my sales, you know, I call my mom, mom, can you get grandma and, you know, say some prayers, light the candle. You know, let's 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 pray for some money. How long did you go through that type of feeling where you have the anxiety, the frustration, you're not not really controlling your sales process or predictable income? I would say about 90 percent of my career over the last seven years, there's like maybe three or four months where I don't know, I was just on a on a wave and I was like, you know, top guy two or three months in a row. But there was it was it, it wouldn't last. It wasn't sustainable. What does that do to you mentally when you go through that? Oh, it's crazy. You know, it's like it's like being the guy to just being, uh, you know, going back to struggling. Uh, okay. It's it's tough. Yeah. Did it have a impact on you? Uh, it did financially because, you know, I'm, I'm in commission. And if I'm not able to to make payments, you know, some some when I'm on a wave, I might make financial decisions that I can't back up when I'm not on a wave. <laughs> All right. So two months ago never heard of any pq jeremy or maybe you have were you in the facebook group for a while I, I was in the facebook group jeremy i was in there lurking i was stealing your nuggets man i was in there just creeping on you and you're, and you're, 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 doing. you're taking some of the free stuff you know we give you yeah. some nibbles here and there to kind of use i think a lot of people like they take the little nibbles and like i'm gonna piece it all together i'm just gonna i'm gonna put together <laughs> the ten thousand piece puzzle with all these different things and i'm gonna try to figure it out and someday one day I'll be successful. Mm -hmm. So right, you can sell a little bit more here and there, but if we're if you're just going through one percent of the one percent of the one percent of the one percent of the actual one percent, because what we do in like giving away like little entrepreneurs nuggets, that's literally like one percent of the one percent of the one percent of the one percent that's actually in our virtual training courses and group trainings for our clients. So sixty days ago, after you you know going through the freebie stuff. What triggered you to be like, I need to really take this seriously and learn these advanced skills if I'm really going to move forward in my life? What triggered that in your mind? And then let's get into some specifics. Yeah, Jeremy. So I had this dream client that was on my dream 100. This was a perfect fit for me. This would have literally been endless commissions. 
uh, and I busted my butt off to go and you know identify the 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 gatekeeper, bypass the gatekeeper, identify the influencer, identify the decision makers, and all those people. Per, you know, get get to an actual meeting. I get on the meeting. This is like this is like three months worth of work, and I'm not getting paid for this. I get to the actual meeting and I botch the sales call. Completely. How do you mean you botch the sales call? You got your perfect dream client. You somehow went through the hoops, probably got lucky, and you botched it. What happened? Yeah. So it was two founders, and you know they're partners. And there's a nice partner, and then there's a little more direct partner. And the the more the guy that was more direct, he immediately comes out. I'm busy. What's your price? And, you know, he starts like pressuring me because he won't he won't let me go on to the next phase until I show him a price. And I'm like, hey, I don't know. You know, we haven't got into specifics. I can give you a range. He was like, what do you mean a range? You have researched our company. And he was like, you know, being really, yeah. you know, He's type being, a. being like most business owners are. And so I take him to one of my general pricing sheets that has, you know, it could be from here to here, entry level to to, you know, this kind of our, this is our Toyota. This is our Ferrari. I don't know what's appropriate. And he's like, what? You're, you're already pitching me price. And I was like, dude, you just asked me for price. And the whole thing blew up. The guy logged off and his partner was like, yeah, we're gonna have to reschedule. And I'm like, dude. Okay. So you lost the deal. Had you had the skills you have now, would you have made that sale? Yes. They would, they would have been a lifelong customer. Why do you feel like you would have? Because that was 60 days ago. Because I now understand how to disarm people. Yeah. How to bypass that one that one little thing is show me the price, show me the price. I, I now know one little trick just to like bypass. It's so simple, but I wasn't doing it. And uh I, I wouldn't have got caught there. I also probably would have uh, gave him a little slap on the hand in a professional way that you guys teach us. And I really perfected through not only your training, but Marco's trainings, uh, Matt's trainings. How much, uh, commission, how much commission would you have made on that deal? Uh, half a million. Okay. O over, over the year, over the course of this year, half a million. So you would have made $500,000 commission had you had the skills you have now. Yes. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty expensive lack of knowledge. Okay. Yep. So what triggered you? You lost the sale. What was your next move after that? I literally got off the call and I was like, I got to call Jeremy. So I go to uh, the Facebook group. I, I'm trying to figure out where to go. I look at the Facebook banner and it's like, you know, book a call right now. I go in there, I book a call. And then I'm, I met with Chris and then he started doing some ninja stuff on me man i was like man this what is the best by, what do you mean by ninja stuff tell me what you mean it was so different than the way i was taught the way that i was approaching and even how the little nuggets that you get it was like that you give out on your facebook group it was like it was like a little bit deeper than that and i was really contemplating my my life my professional life in a great way and it, it left me with with this tension, but it wasn't sales pressure. It was a tension for me to change my life, to change my reality. And I was like, how did he do that? Do you want me to tell you how he did that? <laughs> yes. So it's called internal tension. So it's completely different than sales pressure because sales pressure triggers what? Resistance. Resistance. And the prospect starts to shut down internal mm -hmm. tension triggers what in you the prospect like reflectiveness contemplativeness so it triggers you to think about what me my goals my outcomes yeah and what is that trigger in your mind that you have to do i got to do something there's a gap yeah it triggers urgency it triggers it helps you see where you're at right now and that probably helped you see where you're at in your commissions mm -hmm. compared to where you could be Mm -hmm. And what did he help you find out? What was your gap? What were you saying or not asking that was triggering you to lose all these sales that like our clients who sell exactly what you are make every day? He was putting it back on me. I was selling myself the whole time. He yeah. put me in a box. And yeah. if if I said something that was a cop out, he would he would be like he would slap my hand in a professional way and yeah. make me realize the consequences of that. So you probably realized by the end of the call that 
if you didn't move forward in the training, it had really no impact on us. It would only impact who? Me. Yeah. See the difference? Yeah, I felt it. Okay. That triggers change. So you got into the advanced inner circle. Walk us through a little bit, because let's let's give the, everybody here some nuggets that you're okay. starting to walk away and learn. So when when you got into any PQ, like you started going to the inner circle, you started going through the portal, you started getting on the group training with the trainers, those type of things. Give us like the top maybe three things. Let's talk about the top three things that you're still learning probably right now and what type of results you're getting from that. The the. the Biggest thing that's making a huge difference is really, uh, really approaching it at a fundamental level. Like I am their doctor, and they're they're my patient, and I'm there to serve them. I'm there to help them. I'm not there to sell them, and I want them to feel like I'm really diagnosing them by now asking. Little, them now I want to make sure everybody understands. This does not mean you're giving free consulting. No, this free consulting does not help the prospect change their situation right? So mm -hmm. you're, you're diagnosing, but you're doing it now. When we say diagnosing, it doesn't mean just because you walk on there and you want to ask a bunch of questions that the prospects can be like, oh, well, let me tell you all the answers, right? Mm -hmm. what, how do we teach you how to get them to open up and disarm? Let's give us an example. Yeah. So because I sell outsourcing, a lot of times the people that we work with, they're wearing multiple hats. I hear most of my, most of my clients say, yeah, I wear multiple hats. I say, well, well, well hold on what is that doing for you? And then they're like, oh, well, I can't, you know, I, I'm not able to work on this marketing thing or, you know, I'm working late. I can't see my kids. My wife is going to divorce me, this and that. And it, they're like selling themselves on why they actually need this, which I then use later on in the presentation. So before you were asking surface level questions, mm -hmm. but now we're teaching how to go much deeper than that below the surface, because a sale is a sale made on the surface or is it made below the surface? It's made way below the surface. Yeah, because the average salesperson can pretty much find out a prospect has a problem. Good salespeople can find out they have a problem and the root cause of the problem. The very greatest of salespeople, our clients that are in everybody's industry watching here, are able to find out what their real problems are and help the prospect find them, help them find out and see what the root cause is, but more importantly, help them see help them feel how those problems are affecting them even personally. And you said something really interesting there. You're talking to business owners of companies mm -hmm. and now they're talking about how not having what you're offering, not having the right key employees is even affecting them personally where they can't even see their kids. Now, once you started to learn that, how did your prospects start to treat you and react to you compared to how they would treat you before? They saw me as somebody who could actually help them change their life. I was instant authority. I had higher status versus before. I'm just some sales guy trying to sell them something. So when we come into each conversation, everybody just understands. When we come to each conversation, doesn't matter if you sell B2B, B2C, it's all the same. Any industry, it's all the same. We come in with an equal status. Or usually we're kind of down below here because they know it's a sales call, whether it's outbound or inbound. Now, what we have to do through the course of the call is we have to start asking the right questions with the right tonality and delivery that trigger the prospect to let their guard down, to disarm the prospect. And we start to move up when we're able to do that, which we teach in our virtual training courses and trainings, we're able to raise our status in their mind. So when we raise our status in their mind, they start to view us differently than everybody else who's trying to sell them. They start to view us, like Frank said, as more of the authority more of the expert who's going to get them where they want to go. Now, what do most say is before you learn any PQ, what, where was your status going usually in those calls? Down, down, save me, please like me. Yeah, you, you were needy. You were asking surface level questions. You know, what's keeping you awake at night? Tell me two problems you have. Just boring consultative questions that do not work. They've been around for 50 years. Everybody's heard them, okay? And triggering lots of what? Sales. Resistance. Resistance which lowers our status. Then, like you said, they just throw you over here in the corner and they just view you like any other salesperson who's trying to stuff their solution down their throat. And that's when you have to start doing what? Chasing them, following up, 
begging. Sending letters, sending Open. letters. Now, what are your prospects doing with you now? Instead of you having to chase them, what are they doing? I, Jeremy, I literally had a client send me an email with the subject line that says executive assistant, all caps. And it said, I need one. When can we meet? Yeah, exactly. Now he's chasing you. But that's because you were, the question is because you're learning and you're still learning, by the way. Because mm -hmm. I remember I, we just had the call reviews in the advanced inner circle with that group. And you were, had a call review in there with like 60 or 70 other people in there. And what happened? I got beat up in a great way. Jeremy took the gloves off and he mopped the floor with me, but he built me back up and gave me the skills to never have those kinds of problems again. And there's a replay. So tomorrow I'm probably going to watch that replay, you yeah. know, four or five times and then incorporate that until I just learn it and then put on the next level. Yeah, you did some good things, but there was also some things that you were like triggering resistance and like yeah. could have went the other way if he had been a much harder type of sale, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, so walk us walk us through um, this as well. So you, you've, you've learned how to disarm the prospects. They're starting to become more open. They're starting to engage. What's one good, let's just give them a few nuggets here before you. And what's a good consequence question that you've learned how to ask that really challenges the prospect to think about the consequences of if they don't do anything? Yeah. So a lot, most people reach out to us because they're at some kind of bottleneck or they're, they're beyond, you know, their, their head in the, in whatever they're doing. And so the consequence consequence question that has the most impact for, for us over uh, in our organization is, you know, how long has it been happening? And then once they tell us and say, and what is that doing for your business? And then the, the, the kicker one that really gets them to think, it's like, I see them change completely body language, everything. I feel that status start to rise is what happens if you don't do anything about this and just kick this down the road for the next six months. So and it's thrown out. I know you don't say it like that, but okay. But yeah. help me understand like what happens if you don't do anything about this and you just keep pushing it down the road, like most unsuccessful business owners would, what happens then? Now, how does that change? What happens in their mind? They think about the actual result and they'll actually sell themselves on why that's not the route they want to go. And they'll speak it out loud. It also puts them in a corner in an ethical corner. It's not like I'm, you know, manipulating them. It's the truth. It's their truth. And they know their business better than I. Um, and it, it gets them to see like, OK, if I don't do anything now, this is what's going to happen. So it increases that urgency. I also, because, and I also get them telling me nobody's ever asked me that before. And so when I hear, I hear that, I feel the status start to rise. And I also now see. Let's talk about that. When a prospect says, nobody's ever asked me that before. Why is that so important? Because they feel like you care, man. Well, they feel like you're a knowledgeable expert because there ain't no other salespeople asking them questions like that. Mm -hmm. All those other salespeople are just pesky salespeople trying to sell them something. They don't view you as a salesperson. See, when you get really, really good at selling everybody, when you learn any PQ, people don't feel that you're even selling to them. I want to repeat that. When you learn what we train you as a client in our virtual training courses and our group training, you're going to get to a point where people don't feel that you're a salesperson. Do you want people to feel like you're a salesperson trying to sell them something? No. <laughs> okay. All right. So I've got to go. I know you got to go too. I'm going to go get a haircut real quick. Then I've got a podcast. Um, what's your biggest advice you'd give to like a, maybe a new salesperson just getting into sales or maybe even a vet who's already doing halfway decent. What's your words of advice you'd give to them before we get off? Yeah, the best thing you can do for your sales career and your commissions, your income is to speak with Jeremy's team and just really get into that because the way that they approach stuff, uh, everybody who's out there right now, they're, they're teaching you stuff that worked in the early 2000s, maybe even the teens or in the 2020s. And it's just a totally different way of communication. And it it's just a game changer. So that uh, Jeremy's not paying me to do this. In fact, I'm paying Jeremy the most I've the most I've ever felt comfortable investing in something and it's already paid off within its first two months. So, I mean, it's phenomenal. Yeah, I think you just made a 10K commission today. 10K straight cash, man. Thanks, Jeremy. You're, you're welcome. Would you have made that sale without what you're learning in the advanced inner circle, the 10K commission today? 
twenty percent possibility. You know, if it was a good day, the stars aligned, my grandma and mom prayed, maybe. <laughs> if if the uh, the asteroids aligned and the the moon was in the right place, you might have made the sale. But now you can control the outcome. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. You don't have to pray to the asteroids. Okay, good. I'm just joking. Obviously, praying to God is important. But here's one thing that my bishop of my church always taught me. And a good friend of mine, Andy Andrews, says in his book, God feeds the birds, but he doesn't drop worms in their nest. God feeds the birds, but he doesn't drop worms in their nest. You can pray to him to make sales, but he's just not going to give you sales without you doing something and learning the right skills. Think about that. Frank, I know you got to go to bed. Aren't you over in Europe or something right now? Yeah, I'm in Prague in the Czech Republic. I stay up every night on Monday through Thursday uh, until about 1 or 2 a.m., sometimes 3, just to make sure I make my classes and, and commit to my training because it's worth it that much to me. Is it worth it to make that much money? Help that if much you money? Put, if you put 10 grand in my pocket every day, heck yeah. Okay. You're welcome, son. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're gonna help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.